Hey guys, Jimmy God here, and today I'm going to be showing you the Jimmy Animated Flirty Flasher Pitbull. This is the version that was sold at Rite Aid that sings Baby I Need Your Lovin'. Now you guys may be more familiar with the version that was sold at Walmart that sings I'm Too Sexy For My Shirt. And honestly, in my opinion, the Rite Aid version is by far the better version. That's just my opinion. It's not fact. It's opinion. Maybe it's because uh, it's the version I had growing up. Because I remember going to Rite Aid and actually buying it um, in the original box and tags. Took it all apart and basically just... Played with this thing, and it did stick around with me for a few years, but eventually the uh, the arms actually broke. Like, they would open, but they wouldn't close. I'm not sure um, what caused that issue. So eventually that one got scrapped, and here's a brand new one for old time's sake. Now, this guy did have a splitting 10-tooth gear, which I went in there and replaced, and going inside the 2009 Floaty Flasher module was quite interesting, to say the least. Because it's not built like a like a typical hip swinging character, like you know the snowflake spinners or the hip swinging sanders or anything like that. It's built similarly, but it's not exactly the same. Because of course you got like the little crank knobs at the bottom, and then you've also got the arm mechanism on top connected. But to replace the gear, I had to not only take out the knobs, but I had to like I had to open up the arm mechanism. I didn't have to take apart the gearbox, but I did have to disconnect the wires going to the relay switch. If I was to make any progress without, without ripping the wires off the board, like what happened with my Flirty Flasher Double Monkey. And you all know how I feel about that one. If you haven't already, then check out that video. But I eventually I did manage to get the split gear replaced and put it back together. Soldered the wires back onto the relay switch and I managed to uh, get it reassembled with pretty much no issues. So yeah, and I believe this is also the first Flirty Flasher in the series the original or otherwise, to not have a light-up feature because instead of having a light-up heart, it has a little clock in there that reads Time for Love. And, uh, which I actually think is a bit of a nice change of scenery for the Floaty Flasher series because, you know, like the, the flashing, meaning exposing and flashing, also as in flashing lights, uh, you can actually see the creativity behind the concept of Floaty Flashers in general. So to actually see them actually take out the light-up feature for one of the characters is pretty genius. And, uh, the lack of lighting is a bit more common on the more modern Floaty Flashers, um, mainly like the Lion and the Sock Monkey and the... The only flashing you'll see on the, on like the Wave 2 or 3 of the Floaty Flashers is the, the selfie ones. Like, it has the little LED on the fake phone. That's, that's where the flashing aspect of the Floaty Flasher thing comes in. Y you know what I'm saying. But yep, this guy swings his hips and opens and closes his robe, all combined as one mechanism as he sings, Baby, I Need Your Lovin'. So here he is in action. And I suppose we might as well get the elephant out of the room right now. In Ian e T-Man 98's video, um, on the Walmart version, if you read the description, it says that this guy was released in December 2006 for the Valentine's Day 2007 season. That's actually incorrect. This guy and the Walmart version were both released in December 2008 for the Valentine's Day 2009 season. I know. I've been around the block. I've been there. I've... Like, I've seen the uh, evolution of the Flirty Flashers over the years, because I know that's how it actually went. I know how the um, mechanism um, went. Like, it started with uh, two mechanisms, then it transitioned to one. So there is absolutely no way they went from a two-mechanism two Flirty Flasher to a two-in-one, then back to a two-mechanism Flirty Flasher. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, really, think about it. But then again, that may have just been an error on ENT Man 98's part. Because he because he thought this was part of the 2007 line, when really it wasn't. It's part of the 2009 line. And the tag is in his hip here. It's going to be hard to see. Jemmy Industries Corp, Coppell, Texas. 
And the heart pattern on the boxers isn't the same as it would be on the um, older classic floaty flashers, but it's still a nice design. Mm, the feet are pretty much the same, though. The only difference I'm seeing is the uh, screws. They're shiny instead of black to blend in with the plastic. Let's go ahead and uh, play this guy again. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention that uh, I had to replace the speaker too because his original speaker was kind of quiet. And thankfully I had a spare coin speaker lying around. Um, um, I hooked it up to uh, the head module while I was replacing the split gear and it uh, sounds great again. Let's go ahead and uh, play him one more time. And there you go, guys. That's the Jemmy Animated Flirty Flasher Pitbull, the Rite Aid version. Now, I've got one more question to ask before I go. Which one of these do you prefer? Do you prefer the Rite Aid version like I do or the Walmart version? I mean, they're both equally good, but again, in my opinion, and you can say it's because of nostalgia all you want or whatever, but I do kind of prefer the Rite Aid version better because, uh, because the song I'm Too Sexy for My Shirt Seems a bit of a predictable song choice for the Flirty Flasher, but I'm guessing that's what Walmart wanted with this particular character, so I guess that may explain why there's two versions that exist. But let me know which version you guys like better down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.